Welcome back. I'm Council Member Sam Chavira, and today we are speaking with Chief Terry Garrison of the Glendale Fire Department. Welcome back, Chief. Thank you. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Because I'd rather have you tell about yourself than me. How's that? And you do know a lot about <laughs> me because we've known each other for 30 yes, years. Sir. And uh, it's all good. And, and it's, it's all, all good. good. Thank you very much. So I began my fire service career at the age of 19, right out of the military. I did a couple of years with the U.S. Army and uh, at the age of 19 became a Phoenix firefighter. as a Phoenix firefighter for 30 years. Retired from Phoenix as the operations assistant chief. And uh, I was a fire chief in a few towns. I was a fire chief in Oceanside, California for about two and a half mm -hmm. years. And I could actually see the ocean from my office and uh, kind of missed Phoenix, <laughs> believe it or not. Wow. So I, I came back to the valley for a few months and then um, I was contacted by some friends that uh, live in Houston and they said they're hiring a fire chief in Houston. So I went to be the Houston fire chief for about five and a half years. Houston has a strong mayoral system. And when you get a new fire chief, when you get a new mayor, you get a new fire chief and police chief and city attorney. So her term was up, very nice lady. And, uh, and the great opportunity uh, arose that the Glendale Fire Department was looking for a chief and they may be um, considering uh, an outside person. So I felt like I was an inside person. I applied for the position. Uh, I've been here but for the last six months. Um, I couldn't be any, it's coming home. I'm so happy to be back home. Well, it's a perfect, it's a perfect question for you. Where were you born and raised? Because I think this is going to tell people <laughs> why you know so much about the Valley. So I was born and raised right here on the west side of town. I went to Andalusia grade school, 47th Avenue and Glen Rosa, and then I attended Alhambra High School. So I'm a native. I'm here. I, I tell people I'm from Arizona and I'm proud to be from Arizona. It's a great state. Well, first of all, Chief, I want to thank you for your service in the, in the Army, in the military. Thank you for serving our country. What inspired you to become a firefighter? Okay, well, I wish I had an exciting story for you to tell you <laughs> I was inspired to become a firefighter, but really the way it worked out is that uh, I, I was out of the military. I was 19 years old. I was married with uh, two small children, and um, I I was a helicopter crew chief in the military, so I went to the city and I said, I went in there and I said, I'm, I'd like to apply for your uh, airport as a crew chief for a helicopter. And the lady looked at me like I'd lost my mind. And she, you know, I had my best haircut and it was the 70s and she says, we don't have helicopters. But if you want to be a firefighter, there's a line right there and this is the last week to sign up. So I had my DD-214 and all my documentation. I thought about it, I said, yeah, I think I'd, I could try that. Went, went over, stood in that line, and I was blessed from that point on. And 39 years later, in fact, I'll have 40 years in the, in the fire service here uh, in about six months. So I'm extremely lucky to be here. I want to touch a bit on history. Can you just touch a little bit, when you were in, in the Phoenix Fire Department, a very historical thing happened, and it happened in Glendale. And it started with mutual aid and it turned into automatic aid. Can you touch on that, where we're at with the response times, how that helped us? But also, the other part of the question is the technological advancements we have made in the fire service. Yes, thank you. Thanks for asking me. The history is wonderful. Um, and as I've traveled around, and Houston is the, the third largest fire department in the country, but they look at our automatic aid system, and they we really have 200 fire stations operating in the valley here that do it together. So we're much greater than most people would even imagine. The, the dispatch center in Phoenix dispatches for 26 different fire departments and three other agencies. And that automatic aid simply means that when you call 911, and 911 is such a wonderful system, is somebody calls three little numbers, 911, they ask a few questions, answer a few questions, is what's your address, what's your emergency, how can we help you, and they get a fire truck in front of their house. Not a fire truck from a particular city, they get the closest fire unit in front of their house. And it doesn't matter whether it's white, red, or yellow, they're going to get the closest unit concept is what we call it, the very closest. Because what happens with emergencies, whether it's a fire, a heart attack, the baby in the pool that we discussed earlier, yes. time is most critical. So we just drop those boundaries and we respond. Uh, the closest unit will go to that. That is automatic aid. There's nothing like that in the rest of the country. When I was in California, we attempted to get something like that moving in a, in a smaller scale. And politics got in the way and it got kind of silly. Um, here, we should be so extremely proud of that. 
And then as far as the technology, I think technology is going to help us so much in the future. So um, we can kind of be a little bit more proactive. I don't know if you know it or not. Um, I don't know if the, the citizens know it or not. I know you do as a council member. But we just went to an electronic charting. So when yes. our firefighters yeah. arrive on the scene, they actually use an electric charting. So what that does is that takes the information from the patient, sends it directly to the hospital. The hospital can start preparing and how they can actually work better. What we really do is we, the fire service in the valley, owns the pre-hospital care system. We own it from 911 all the way to the delivery of the patient to the hospital. We work with our private ambulance company here in Glendale, but that's the, the most important piece is owning that entire system. I love how you talked about the electronic charting. And one of the things in, the, in all public safety you learn, or even just in the legal system, if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. And one of the things that now from, we're moving from paper, which means more green, right, using trees, but um, be more environmental, but at the end of the day, you have now protected that information electronically, correct? You have, and not only can you, you protect it for the patient, you can use it with the patient care, but then we can start tracking trends. If we start to see that we have a lot of strokes or we have a lot of uh, heart attacks or there's something that is occurring in our city, we can be more proactive. We work with our medical director and we get out in front of those things. If we look like we can also um, actually track outcome, if we have a, a type of incident that we find that we're needing ambulances sooner, then we'll add an ambulance to the dispatch. If it's a fire type call where we need more resources, then we'll add more resources on the front end. So it actually helps us get the key to the fire service is getting the resources to the scene that are necessary to solve that customer's problems as soon as we possibly can. You know, and Chief, also advancements also are looking at things how we used to do them yesterday and how we can do them better today. And a perfect example on that, and I want you to expand on that, is how we gone from CPR to the 200 compressions. Right, exactly. So, and I think this was because firefighters uh, really participate in the, in the process of how CPR was, was most effective. And what, what the physicians found is that the way we were doing CPR and the time that we were taking to give that extra breath wasn't really helping the patient, that they had enough uh, circulating oxygen in their blood that if we just kept that circulating we could we could actually have a better outcome for the patient so that was an example of what we did in the field had a direct impact on patients the doctors saw that they came out with a new program and I don't know if you know it or not I know you know it but Glendale is the leader um, for uh, where you actually took the lead before I got here I can't take credit for it although I'd love to but we were we led the nation with the compressions the way it is yes, now. Yes, I did. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know because you were part of it. Well, and not only that, I actually got to use 200 compressions. I've actually we've actually got to revive people when they were witnessed. Uh, they made it uh, to the cath lab in time, and now they're living living incredible, fruitful lives. Yeah, and and that's the key, right? The the key is to when somebody's having their worst day possible to get there. Um, as soon as we can solve their problems so they can go on with their life. And I think that's the other thing that's happening um, with us is that we're able to better solve the customer's problem and, and make it so um, you've, you've been on calls of stroke victims and such where uh, the patient care wasn't um, soon enough and the devastation and how long that takes afterwards for that patient to recover and the impact it has on the family. So the sooner we can get there, we track, the, we track outcomes, the better we can get at really um, mitigating the medical condition and making that person's life and their family's life much better down the road. At the end of the day, when, when you call 911, our job is to make your day better, right Chief? Absolutely, absolutely. Chief, I really want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for your commitment, not only to the fire service, but to our family here in Glendale. Thank you so much for you know, taking us to, uh, to another level. Thank you for being my friend for the last 30 years, being a firefighter and doing such a great job for the city of Glendale. How'd I get the motor? I thought it was your brother, now I'm your friend. <laughs> chief, true. once again, thank you so much. It's great having you and it's great having you here as our chief in Glendale. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Glendale Fire Department safety programs and about Glendale's very own fire chief. To find more information about the Glendale Fire Department's programs, you can visit glendaleaz.com slash fire. Thank you for watching. I am Council Member Sam Chavira, and I'll see you next time on Glendale Today.